How do you create extra time? Time management was one of the main issues in my first that workshop that I delivered. Um, you need to adopt mindsets. So usually having time means you have not the right mindsets. And what do I mean with that? And it could be different with you, so correct me if I'm wrong. But usually my entire mindset throughout my entire process of founding my company, so whatever I do is, I don't want to be doing this, how do I outsource this? So if you have that mindset, then you're good. Uh, because then you'll be hiring people as much as possible, you'll be growing your team, um, and they'll be doing everything, and then you'll be doing what you should be doing. Um, then the second thing, and that's what my uh, early mentor shared with me, and this guy is the founder of TEDx Leuven. We sat down one day, and we were drinking, and at the end, we just finished the TEDx event and everything, and, and we were just chatting, and I learned a lot from it, I had my notebook, I was writing stuff down. And he said, um, you'll be successful the moment you start focusing. So, because I had a lot of company, like a lot of things that I was doing that were branded as companies, but not really. And so my focus was diverted. And when I was founding Why Not 3, this was a big issue because I had followed his advice and I had focused on my main company, which is Lightning Video Editors, and it had become really successful. But here I am in a workshop and I start seeing where my calling is leading me, where I can really truly help people, which is Why Not 3. And here I was struggling because I needed to find, found a second company if my friends, my friends were ending up in the hospital by the dozens. I'm not like I'm not joking because I'm friends with overachievers. I'm an overachiever myself. And so my friends were ending up in hospitals. And I had to do it because these people were just like not listening to they, like they couldn't listen to one advice. They had to listen to this like book pretty much. Like there's so much content that I had to give to them but over a period of time. And it wasn't one friend, it was a lot of friends. So why not three had to come? And here I'm going kind of against the advice of that guy that told me you should focus. So what I started doing is automating as much as possible in my main company to the point where the production phase was completely automated. How did I know it was completely automated? Because I went to Bulgaria. We had a, a meetup with the mastermind that I'm in, in Bulgaria snowboarding. And my MacBook broke down. <laughs> And I manage everything on my MacBook, so I only had my iPhone. And a new client, I was literally in the airport, and a new client, as I'm checking in my security stuff, a new client, like a referral university, because we were working with universities at the time, calls me. And they're like, oh, we heard from this university, you did their uh, intro to the year movie thingy, can you do it for us? And I'm like checking in my bags and stuff as I'm doing this, so I have like five minutes before my bags start. I'm like, uh, yeah, what's your budget, blah, blah. Within two minutes, it's like, okay, done. <coughs> but I'm going to Bulgaria, and so I need to like figure this whole thing out. So what I do is I call my cameraman. Uh, this is even before my bags are still, I'm calling him, I still have two minutes. I'm like, do you have a project here and here? Are you available that day? He's like, yeah. So I check in, everything, I go out of the security. I'm like making my briefing on the iPhone. It's like, this is, I'm not even making the briefing, I'm forwarding the email of, I'm copy pasting the email of that university lady that, that she sent me. And he's like, okay. And I go snowboarding and he goes, films it, uh, which is amazing. And um, I come back from snowboarding and he's like, everything is uploaded, uh, this is the link. So I can't even check what he filmed because I have an iPhone and I can't check raw footage on an iPhone. So I'm like, forwarding it to my video editor and like can you do this in like two days and he's like yeah cool <laughs> so he does it and I'm going like for a drink the next day I get my email it's done I can't check the results because I'm on my iPhone so I kind of trust my editor forward it to my client and and she's like oh yeah that's really really cool can you add some titles like there was like five adjustments and I'm like uh, okay forward it to the editor <laughs> boom done completely closed and I was just like enjoying my life. Uh, so that's when I knew it was automated. And now it was automated, uh, except for one part you notice, which is quality checks. So I, I could automate that at that point. But it was production phase was completely automated. So now I can know that 
I have to start scaling. And I can start scaling by hiring other people that do my job. Um, and I can start doing why not three? Because everything is automated here. All the essentials are automated. I can trust my people. They're motivated. They're good at what they do. Um, and I'm getting referral clients. And so <coughs> why not three now pops up and now I'm doing the exact same processes until the point where it gets automated. And, and then sometimes shit hits the fan. And then you have to go back. Uh, but the main focus is still my main company. And this is something that I do when at the end of the day, I'm like, enough. And I take two hours and I do that. Because I'm the kind of person that doesn't sit still. But the reality still remains, which is the original advice that uh, my mentor gave me, is focus on one. And the only reason I'm doing these two things is because my second thing is why not three? Work-life balance for overachievers. So if I can do two companies, then anybody else can follow my advice and why not three? So it was, it was a, kind of a, a thing that I had to do to show people that it was possible. So you're going into three or four companies and my advice would be the exact same thing that my mentor told me at the time, focus on one. And that one thing should be scalable and it should bring you more money than all of those things. Unless you really have received a calling where you really know you can change people's lives and then you're suckered into two companies. Uh, but if you're gonna have three, four, five companies, unless you're the investor and you have like a 10% stake in it or something like that, but if you're actively the CEO of three or four companies, that's really hard. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, tell me more about it because maybe. I like to do a lot of things and all different things. I just have a lack of time to do all the things. Okay. There are more things I would like to do. You can't cut things. Like you can't cut two companies and, and or put them under an umbrella of one company. Or maybe are, are similar activities. Why? They're or, not similar activities. Okay. Can I ask why you do it? Um, I think I just have a broad interest in things. So, and um, what's the problem of focusing on one until you automate it? I spent one year in therapy to, to do that. So I really tried to follow an advisor to focus on one thing. No, that's not what I'm saying. Focus, on, company, yeah. focus on one thing until it's automated, yes. then go to the next. It's all people related to the jobs, so you cannot really automate. Okay. Why are you doing it? <laughs> because it makes me happy. So. Okay, but you can't... Okay, so what I would advise you specifically if you would sit down one-on-one -on -one is figure out why you do what you do and then a lot, take the company that is most aligned to this why and go for that one. I would really advise cutting um, and that doesn't mean you have to cut the activities because you can still take the, the things you like from the other companies and put them under one umbrella. And who decides your time? Who decides your time? Me, myself. Yeah. Do you have but still you mm -hmm. have to, uh, not enough time? No, because okay. I like to do more. Can can you outsource? No. Okay, can you is that is it do you have these systems? Uh uh hopefully, but I do not Okay, you should map out everything. Yeah. Because yes. most of the problems lie in <laughs> that it's not mapped out and then you don't see where you can automate. But usually you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's all about going really detailed. I know it's, it's, uh, it's really, you have to go really detailed. Like this is really broad. My companies are really detailed to the point where my hiring funnels are like, I copy paste stuff. I know the exact, like it's just there. And then sometimes I adjust depending on what I hire, like who I hire. So it has to go super detailed. And it's those moments that you can start outsourcing. Even if it's super, like consultancy, like the biggest consultancy firms have outsourced their consultants because they've done this really, really detailed. So there's always a way to, to scale that. And the only way is go really detailed and start looking where you can outsource what. And if you can't outsource it, it's usually because it's not detailed enough. But what if the person, the companies only want to talk to you as a person, so they don't want to. That's expectation setting. In the beginning, my face was on the company, and I started rebranding a lot to the point where my face wasn't my company anymore. 
And, and the way companies accept that is the results you deliver. As long as you have results, people don't care. Unless it's something like, psycho like psych psychology and stuff like that. But even then, Tony Robbins has built an empire and he's outsourced it. So there's always something to outsource. If you really want, you can like sit down with me and we'll like look over it like at the end of, with the Q&A. But usually you can outsource stuff. Most of the time you can outsource it. And if it's... You should yeah. be flexible. They can do away uh, a lot of things uh, that are all kinds of things next to each other. And now you uh, have the feeling that you want to uh, focus on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that answer your question then? Yeah. The other side of it is, because I was also in that period in the beginning, is you need to optimize your sleep. You need to make sure that you take the right supplements and use the right machines. Uh, that in those four hour windows you get more deep sleep than you would in an eight hour sleep window. So I got four hours optimized already, so I think it's not possible to do Do, do you track your sleep? Do you have a sleep tracker? No, but I know I, if I just... You can't know, believe me, you can't know unless you have a sleep tracker. So once you get a sleep tracker, it's an iPhone app, literally one dollar. Get it, put it next to your bed, and see if it is super optimized. If it is, you'll be fine. If it's not, then the first thing that I recommend is magnesium. The second thing is GABA. Um, and then there are a couple of machines, which is a heart math, which will get you into deeper sleep if you start mastering that skill of that device. And the second thing, and this is what I always use when I sleep on less than five hours, is a CES machine, which is a cere cerebral electrostimulation machine which puts you into deep sleep way faster. Um, and then I would switch, this is my opinion, so you should check and like track with you, but I would switch you up to a high fat diet, good fats, because when you have a high fat diet, you're more stable energy wise, and you sleep deeper usually from tracking, and all my biohacking friends have tracked it as well, so usually that's the case. But there are some exceptions where people can't have high-fat diets, so track and check. But if you don't have a tracker, then it's really hard to take your word on it because people think they sleep well, but they don't know what real good sleep is. Have you ever had days where you're like, whoa, I never thought a sleep like that was possible? If that's not every day with you, then you're not tracking it enough. But yeah, if your sleep is optimized, then ignore everything I just said. But it all comes down to tracking everything and optimizing every little second, especially when you're sleeping four hours, which I wouldn't advise, unless that's your natural thing. You actually don't want to sleep. You yeah, actually I like don't to want to sleep. I like to sleep. If I have four hours sleep, I'm sleeping really deep, like I really have some dreams and new ideas and things I want to do. Do, do you so have enough problems? energy throughout the yes. day? Yes. Okay, no, so usually it should be fine. I still advise to track your sleep because if you are going off, you'll be able to see it on your tracker. Because the thing is, the reason I discovered all of this biohacking and everything is because I was doing that. And the common knowledge is it's not healthy. Yeah, that's what I hear from So the thing is, don't listen to common knowledge. Track, use trackers to know if it works for you. And if it doesn't, optimize by using supplements, using gear and stuff like that. Um, and it's then that you can decide whether it's healthy for you. So if you're happy, healthy, everything's fine, and your tracker tells you that, then it's fine. Don't listen to common knowledge. Most, most people don't know. Even I don't know. I don't know who you, what your body is, what you consist of. But I would advise you to like start focusing on stuff until you automate it and then move on to the next because then you can juggle everything. Richard Branson then started with a hundred companies. He started with one, started automating, building, building. I have two small questions. One.